Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Welcome to Drinking Bros. We got an awesome guest today. Mm -hmm. We got Carrie Kasem on the show, daughter of the late Mm -hmm. great Casey Kasem, one of my all-time favorites. Welcome to the show. How are you? Thank you. I'm good. As good as you can be in this kind of crazy world right now. But yeah, I'm good. How about you guys? We've stopped talking about it all together. We're just we're completely just uh, ignoring COVID and anything that's going on around it. Yeah, I've just been driving around town, getting out and high fiving random people. Yeah, because <laughs> don't tell me what to do. Basically, yeah, don't see you don't tell Dan Dan Holloway what to do. Essentially, no, I I dress up in full hillbilly regalia. I go jorts mm-hmm. and then a, a sleeveless flannel shirt. Blonde mullet wig and then a fucking Budweiser hat with one of the with a fish hook on it, and I just walk <laughs> around like ain't nobody telling me what to do. Hell no. <clears throat> uh, but you look great. We've got a couple of white trash animals over here. You look great. How are you staying so in shape and, and with it during the quarantine? Working. I swear, if I don't stay busy, I, it's like depression, anxiety. I'm like, I can't. I, I haven't watched the news for, I don't know, I got my TVs out of here over 15 years ago. And I did put, my, when I, I dated a guy who did bring his TV over and we, we had Apple TV, so I watched that. But I don't watch the news. I get my news from certain things I read and certain places I, you know, trust mostly, I guess. Yeah. Um, and that's that's where I get my news. But I, I think I would lose it if I was watching that negative mm. BS all the time. So, so you just completely eliminated that from your life altogether. Yeah, you know, um, people, when they have anxiety and upset, and my dad was a worry wart, like constantly worrying about everything. I mean, when we go out, when we were kids and we didn't have a sweater on, we were going to die and catch a cold. If we didn't have our seatbelt on, we were going to die in a car accident. <clears throat> my dad was constantly worried about everything. Um, and one of the things was there was always worry about, you know, breaking in and, and the, the crime and this and that. It's like, turn your computer, turn your, yeah, your computer now, but your TV off too. Stop watching that. And anybody who goes to therapy, a good therapist will say, turn the news off. Yeah. You know, watching. I kind of like that move where your uh, boyfriend brought a TV over. I'm going to start doing that. It's a boss move. I'm going to start like even on dates. I'm bringing like a little mini TV with me. Yeah. Bring a 42 incher over. Just, uh, set, just set that up right next to the bed <laughs> or, or in between us at the restaurant. <laughs> I'll just peek over like you're still there. All right. Great. Are you married right now? <clears throat> no. Not at all. Well, um, it could, it, it could be that single. TV. It could yeah. be that TV. You might want to throw a big screen up on the wall <laughs> and just get ESPN Plus. Get a projector. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> My friend has that. No. So when we go to movie nights, that his his projector, his, his it's amazing. It's fantastic. But yeah. yeah, he comes over. He's like, this isn't gonna work. You know, we gotta we gotta be able to watch the movies. He's an actor. You know, so he's yeah. like, gotta watch certain certain shows. So it was it's fine. I watch them now. I watch. I buy my my shows off of Apple TV. What do you I watch? Just, yeah. What's your jam? I mean, wow. Let's see. What's the last thing I watched that I thought was any good? Oh, Broad Church. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. That show? Mm-hmm. It's yeah. so good. It's so good. Anyway, so Broad Church, it's from England. That was great. Um, I'm so bad. I yeah, well, look, because we're, we're, we're asking for suggestions. We're all at the end of our Netflix queues at this point and Hulu okay. and everything else. So. Yeah, I think the last big thing that came out streaming was that uh, 365, which is basically Eastern European pornography, right? I mean, it's yeah, yeah. Like on it's, Netflix. It's softcore porn. Yeah. So it's like, that's the last yeah, thing of thing. note. What's that? Not my thing. <laughs> no, I don't think it's anybody's thing. Carrie, give it a shot. There's a lot of ladies who are watching 365 on really? Netflix. So oh, it's, like the, it's like the new... Uh, Gray, it, 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 yeah, it's fuck. like the new um, 50, Shades. Uh, Fifty Shades of Grey. So much so, they've already <laughs> greenlit the sequel. So get ready I've for that. I've never heard of it. I've never been heard. There was another English show called Bodyguard I thought was good. Oh, yeah, that's good. Know. That's that's the guy that played uh, King Rob in, yes. in the first two seasons of Game of Thrones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, right. He's like a Secret Service agent, essentially, in, in the UK. It's, a, it's actually a really good series. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was a great one. <clears throat> I don't know. That's I, I watch here and there. I start to watch stuff, and they, it's so bad, I just stop watching it. I understand. Um, uh, plus, you, you grew up in a radio family, so you know. I would imagine you, you probably listened to the radio more than anything growing up. No, she with, grew up watching Scooby Doo, bro. Come being on, being Casey Kasem. That's that too. Like it's got to be. It, it's got to be wild. That your dad was <laughs> Scooby Doo. You know. Yeah, you know, he. Uh, most people don't know that. They just know him from American mm-hmm. Top 40. But when there's kids that's just of a younger generation, I say, well, yeah, you do know my dad. You ever watch Scooby-Doo? Mm-hmm. And they say, well, he was the voice of Shaggy. Mm-hmm. And, oh, my God, people freak out about that. 
they love that. So it's, it, that's very cool. Still you know? to this day, it's one of those brands that has lived on to this very day. Um, when I got the call that, uh, that, that you were going to be on the show, I had the your, – your dad, by the way, is, is just a, an absolute legend in the industry of mm-hmm. – he's an all-time great, obviously. Um, but the wildest thing happened to me. So we're, we're moving our entire studio to Austin, Texas. I was telling you that before we came on air. Um, it's about a 20-hour drive from Wilmington, North Carolina to there. During the last stretch of that drive, look, you start to lose it. You, you, you think you're hallucinating. <clears throat> there was a good two hours where – I went through this tiny town in, uh, in Texas. I didn't know where I was. I'm not that familiar with that state that much. And your dad came on the radio. And, and I was like, oh, shit. Like, I felt like I'd maybe driven into some form of wormhole or something like that. But he, he was doing a dedication in the middle of it. Obviously, you know, to a special little girl in 1981 who lost her thing. And I was like... Holy shit. So I found myself listening to it. It was from 1981. Um, it was a top 40 show from 1981. And I guess what they do, because uh, local radio stations are having so many, so many problems these days, is they're playing old reruns of your father's top 40s from well, different they, years. They have been. Actually, the, some, of, some of the most popular shows on air right now are my dad's 70s and 80s show. They're doing very well with it. Um, Sirius is doing well with it. Mm-hmm. I am on the FM that are playing his shows are doing well. And they have been for the last, I mean, since he's he's passed and since before that. But yeah, it, it wasn't just due to, you know, what's going on now. Uh, so I was, I, I just, I'm really happy that his, his, um, his memory <clears throat> is, you know, it's, it's kept alive in these old shows. And I'm so glad that. It'd be interesting to see a biopic. I, I'm surprised that hasn't happened yet. Maybe, am, maybe it was uh, Rami Malik or whatever the fuck his name is. He oh, yeah, playing, like playing your dad. I don't yeah, know if he yeah, could do I, the voice or not, but he looks kind of like that, and he's a good actor, obviously. Somebody's yeah. got to do it at some point. Like, the guy's got an incredible life that isn't just top 40. Like, yeah. There's so much other shit going on there that no one knows yeah. about. Like, yeah. His, <clears throat> he did a lot of, uh, like, I don't even know how you would – how you would classify like conflict resolution stuff between the Israeli Palestine conflict mm-hmm. throughout the eighties and nineties. Like it, there's so much more stuff to him than just being a voice of a cartoon character on a TV show. Yeah. And I saw your post on Instagram um, about what happened in Beirut. Um, tell us a little bit about uh, what your dad uh, was doing in that region and, and what it meant to him. Cause I, I saw your Instagram post, but for those who haven't um, explain it. Sure. Yeah. My dad was a very, very proud Arab American and very, very mm-hmm. proud. Um, his uh, mother was actually born in the States and then moved back to Lebanon. And then her, his father was born in Lebanon and they both then moved out here uh, to the States and in Michigan, in Michigan and opened a little grocery store and had my dad and had his brother Munir. They actually had another son, but the, the, the kid died. And uh, that was very hard on my father. Very hard. Um, but he grew up, you know, with the family grocery store running that. <clears throat> and from there, you know, school was very important to, to the family. And he got into school. He got into college and loved baseball, wanted to be a baseball player. And uh, from there, he, he actually got into some sports radio and did, did loved, started, ra- you know, loving radio. But then he got sent to the Korean War and he, he did a lot of radio over, over uh, where Overse- he was staying. Overseas, yeah. 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 And uh, he wrote a letter to his mom and brother every single day he was there. And we have like the bag of letters. It's so beautiful. And in one of the letters, well, many of the letters, he said, I'm going to come home and I'm going to take care of you guys. And I'm going to I'm going to make it big. I'm going to make it big and I'm going to take care of you guys. And it's just he was he was, you know, anything he put his mind to, he did. He really did. And um, he not only was. A, an, an incredible on-air personality and created American Top 40 and 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 did that. But he was a humanitarian. Mm-hmm. You know, like I said, he, he went and he would put people together from Israel and Palestine, Arabs and Jews and Zionists, put them in a room so that they would talk. So, you know, they could talk it out. And he really wanted peace in the Middle East. Like, more than anything, I think that was one of his... Um, I think lifelong goals was to achieve some type of peace there. And and also for animals, he was a vegan. So nobody knew what vegan was when he was a vegan. They called him a vegan. I remember that all the time. A vegan, you're a vegan. And <laughs> That's funny. 
Yeah. So, I mean, he, he stood up for animal rights. He, he changed a lot of the factory farming laws. He got arrested for protesting it. I mean, we, I was traumatized as a child. Here I am as a kid, and I'm looking at these horrific, horrific, like animal cruelty and torture pictures. And, you know, soon after that, I became a vegan. And uh, I was like, this is horrible stuff, but traumatized ever since. But, you know, my dad always stood up for things that weren't popular at that time. And he wasn't afraid of that. He wasn't afraid of that. Yeah. And, and for such a great man and, and, and for how famous he was, um, his death was extremely bizarre. Um, and, and I know you were embroiled in uh, legal battles for years and years and years. Um, but uh, uh, what happened right around 2014? Because it was so shocking to, I think, everyone across the nation that it was like, wait, what? Casey Kasem's not doing well, and then his children aren't allowed to see him. What's happening to Casey Kasem? And, and it became this huge national story. Um, and, you, and you were in the middle of it. Uh, if you could talk about that. Um, I, I never knew what the real answer was, and I, I've always been curious. Sure. I mean, so many people I, I have heard it, but you know, for the people who haven't, uh, my dad's wife decided in his last year of life, we didn't know it was going to be his last year. Uh, he was still walking. He was still talking. We were seeing him every weekend. You know, we were talking to him every day on the phone until he lost his voice and made it hard for him. But we always, we or, I mean, if you know anything about Middle Eastern families, I mean, it, most are very close knit. And yeah. Like the parents are always involved. They want to know what you're doing. You know, the day and what, what the, uh, you know, how, how was your day? Uh, that was my dad. Like every day we got a call from my dad. And she decided, uh, his wife decided that, she was going to shut the gates to the house. It's a big house, long driveway, fire everybody we knew, take out the phones, and basically say you can't see your dad anymore. That's what happened. What was the reasoning I, behind that? Did you guys have a tift, uh, you and the and, and the mom, I guess, your mom? I, you know, it's my stepmother, stepmother. Um, but they were you, married you know, for 34 years, correct? Right. And, I mean, in my opinion, in my opinion, and now, now dealing with elder abuse cases, from people who ask for help from my foundation. They, uh, and this is my opinion, she's a sociopath. So there's there it's cookie cutter behavior. And I see this, I can predict when people call me and they tell me, look, my stepmother's doing this or my stepdad's doing this or my sister is doing this and they start to tell me the behavior and I'll tell you, oh, then do they do this? I'm like, how do you know that? Have they said this? How do you know that? It's like they, they read from the same playbook. It's sociopathic. <clears throat> and, um, so it, you can't, unless you're really involved with somebody that is that, that has no empathy for human life and doesn't care, you don't understand. There's nothing you can do to make them like you. There's nothing you can say. You can't apologize enough. We didn't understand being so young why she hated us. We didn't get it. I mean, we asked her one time. She actually sat down long enough for us to do a family meeting. And we were in our late teens, early 20s. And I remember I said, you know, dad, let's sit down. We don't understand why she hates us. We don't get it. Like, why is there so much animosity? Why does she not like us coming to the house? Why does she, you know, hang up on us? What, what's going on? So, I mean, we sat down at a family meeting and, you know, we said, Jean, there, we've done something with Ari. I remember all of us are like, whatever we did, we apologized, whatever it may be. And, you know, and uh, she couldn't tell us what we did. She couldn't, she had no answer for that. And then she just turned to me and she's like, you've ruined my life. You've ruined my marriage. I'll never forgive you. And she got up and walked out. And really? that was, like, what do you do with that? Like, what? What she you- sounds super stable from my perspective. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what your guy's problem is. Man, <laughs> like, that's, that, that's insane. So, yeah. I mean, I, again, it's so hard because she's married to your father for 34 years. That is an incredibly long relationship. Usually you hear about these Hollywood relationships where, you know, uh, they they break up. Guy marries a, a a woman thirty years younger, and then she ends up taking the family to the cleaners later on because it's like, well, it's my money now, and I don't give a shit about you know your children, your past life. But uh, I was with you the last five to ten of this one, and we're all good. This one though, for a thirty four year relationship, is is very very strange. Yeah, but there's a reason why he stayed so long, and that's because he had another child. And he, when he lost us, when my mom divorced him, my dad didn't divorce my mom. My mom divorced him. She, she asked for the divorce. Um, it was the worst thing in the world to lose us. And he said that it was the worst thing that he, that he ever, he's ever experienced was to lose his children. 
And I knew that he would never, ever want to lose another kid. And I think that's why he stayed. And I, you know, there's personal talks I've had with him. I'm not going to reveal. Of course. But I'm, you know, there's some things that were said that I believe that's what happened. Also, you have to remember, <clears throat> when somebody is a pathological liar and just con constantly lies, 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 there's nothing that, if, let's say he were to divorce her, what, what could she have said about him? Right. To destroy him. That's a terrifying position to be in, right? He was terrified. And so, you know, it's and, and he did think, he did love her. I'm not going to say he didn't. He loved her. And he kept thinking it was going to get better. And I remember, I remember he would say this for years when we'd say, Dad, why do you let her treat her that? Why do you let, you know, her yell at you and treat you this way? Why do you, why, why, why is she so mean to you? Oh, it's going to get better. It's going to get better. Dad, why does she hate us? Why does she hang up on us? Why won't she let you talk to us? Oh, it's, it's going to get better. I mean, it's like through years, decades, like, it's going to get better. And I remember we're all in a car. It's me, my brother, my sister, my dad. And Gina just finished screaming at him on the cell phone. And he puts the, uh, the phone down. And my dad, when is this going to stop? You have, this has got to stop. You have to, you have to do something. And he looks and he's driving and he's like, it's going to get better. And there was a pause and we all started laughing. Like it was either cry or like we <laughs> like, all started laughing. It's like, it's not getting better. It's never going to get better. And uh, yeah, I'll never forget that. I'll never forget that. And uh, I mean, there's many things said that were personal, but uh, there's, there's, there's something coming out. I can't really talk about it right now because we're in the middle of production and I'm, can't say much, but sure. things are going to come out that it's not going to be me talking about it anymore. It's not going to be my sister, my brother. It's going to be, you know, you're going to see another stuff. And, uh, and then that will be my closure and I'll be done with this. But I, when somebody takes away the most important person in your life, mm -hmm. you know, let's say your child was kidnapped. You're not going to be like, oh, okay, well, the law says I really, you know, I have to fight this in court and I have to, you know, uh, go against her. Uh, you know, her court papers, the po power of attorney or the guardianship. I have, we have to fight that. Ah, you know, you, you don't just drop that. No. Right. That. <clears throat> you know, if I lost everything, if I lost my house, but whatever, I was going to fight for it. This is a man who told the courts, I want to see my children. Emphatically. He said it several times and the court couldn't just dole out visitation because there was no jurisdiction to do so. So th there's a long story here. And when I speak, cause I do, I go on, my speaking tours, I tell the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people have heard it. I don't want to continue to go on with it. But the one thing is when my father told the judge, I want to see my children, there was no law allowing her to just give visitation without fighting for power over power of attorney or guardianship. So the, the judge said, uh, go out in the hallway and figure it out. <clears throat> and at that point I knew we were in trouble because you can't figure out some, but something with somebody who doesn't want you to see. Right. Her husband so i ended up changing the law in california yeah I I uh, you got it you court. actually got a bill passed in in the state of california correct i got i got um tw i got the case and cares foundation and myself passed 12 bills in 12 different states now we have actually 13 bills in 12 states and nine other states adopted a version of the case and cares visitation bill so we have 21 states that's amazing. Uh, and, and, and again, I know you've talked about it um, on other shows and things like that. Um, for us, it's, it's more of a wake up call for the audience of like, this could happen to one of your parents. Um, and again, when this was going on, uh, there was, you know, I, I heard rumors. We, we weren't sure what was happening, that, that uh, he was moved from Los Angeles to Washington, the state of Washington during this. And that um, he was buried in Norway for some mm -hmm. reason. Yeah. So when, when I did, we did eventually win some visitation. Uh, I do a law show here in Los Angeles. I'm going on seven years here on KBC. And uh, we interviewed a, a lawyer named Martha Patterson, elderlawmom.com. And I get off the air from with her and she says, you know, you can see your dad. I'm thinking, oh, God, she doesn't know the case. She doesn't understand what's going on. And she's like, no, you, you can see your dad. I'm like, well, you know, and I tried to explain to her. She said, well, there's the patient's bill of rights. <clears throat> And at this point, I've gone through, you know, I, I got rid of two attorneys that we started with. I had another attorney at this point. And she's like, there's a patient's bill of rights. I'm like, well, why haven't I heard of this? She's like, a lot of people don't. It allows a person in a hospital or a nursing home to have visitation, to be able, I mean, you cannot take away their phone. You cannot take away their um, means of communication with letters or with a uh, computer. You can't do it. It's illegal. And, and, and if somebody says they want to see you, then they have to let you in. 
And she said, well, I was in court the day Leslie Green, Judge Leslie Green says, Casey Kasem wants to see his kids. It's in a transcript. She's like, I'm going to march into that. And TMZ had let us know my stepmother had hid my dad in several hospitals so we couldn't find him and wouldn't pick him up. She'd used the hospitals as a babysitter. Wow. And they called Adult Protective Service on, mm. her, on her several times. I have all of it. I have all of it. Um, so anyway, so the, they... Um, now I've like completely lost where I'm at. Anyway, so he's 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 at the he's being babysat at these different hospitals mm -hmm. as we're trying to see them, and uh, and we could have all along seen him because of the patient's bill of rights, but we didn't know about it. Anyway, a day later, Martha Patterson and I, uh, this lady I just met from my radio show, we walk into where he's saying where TMZ had called us and said, "Look, we found out where your dad is. This is where he, she's hiding him." They never put anything up, and I'll thank I thank them to this day, because this was the last visit I got to see with my dad being able to talk. And TMZ and did that for you. TMZ, TMZ wow. called him, and we found him, and told us where he was. So uh, we walked into uh, the the we walked into the office. She said, "Look, if you don't let the kids see their dad, we can sue you." And here's why: very nicely, showed him the law, and within thirty minutes. I was sitting there with my dad. I, I said to my sister, get over here. We can see dad. I put my brother on Skype. He was in uh, Singapore. And we had this three-hour visit with my dad. It's, you know, my boyfriend was there. My the, Martha Patterson was there, the owner, the woman who ran it, and his two nurses. And, uh, you know, he, they said this was the most animated and happy he'd been since he'd been there. Three months with no visitation from his wife or child. And if they're... There was nothing on the walls. It was completely white. He didn't have his glasses. Mm. You know, it was it, it was absolutely horrible. Absolutely horrible. Well, I apologize uh, for everything that you went through. Again, it, he was such a he seemed like such a caring, loving guy. For that to be the end of his life was was so bizarre to everybody in the in the world at that point. And and again, the story seemed crazy um, that they were unbelievable. And you know, back in the day, TMZ. Let's face it, they don't have the best reputation. So you were wondering if you were getting the actual news or, you know, some weird distorted version TMZ wise of it. And uh, it's it's nice to hear that this is what actually happened. And uh, it's a wild story. Um, but uh, it's crazy. And there's even more to it. And every, you know, everything's going to come out and I can't talk too much about it. I'm very, I feel like it's going to give me closure and I feel like it's, it's going to finally end things and there's going to be some justice. And I'm, I'm, is that I'm some happy. form of documentary you think, or, or a show? I mean, I've been shooting a documentary for the last seven years. So that's definitely happening. Great. And, and then when it does happen, I'll, I'll, I'll come back on and, and let you, let you guys know. Sure, yeah. Please do. Please do. It, it, it seems though, like controversy seems to follow you. Um, I, I listen to your podcast, the red pill podcast. Yeah. Um, were you banned at some point? What happened with that? What was the real story with, with your show? Yeah. So in, in 2009, I started the red pill podcast and, uh, along with the K pod and we were one of the first kind of, nobody knew what a podcast was back then. Yeah. No idea. And, uh, and it, it was my friend Ashley and I, and we, we loved conspiracy. I mean, we went, and, we went to watch David Icke speak in 1993-94 uh, in Los Angeles. This is how like into conspiracies we were. So we're like, let's do a conspiracy show. It's going to be super fun. <laughs> I have all these people on, you know, that are now like their household names now if you follow anything. But it's like Wakefield was on. We had Sherry Tenpenny on. We, I mean, we had all these people that, you know, they're, they're deemed, you know, conspiracy theorists, but we had Dr. Sherry Tempany on who had done a ton of research into vaccines Had actually moved out of the country for a while because she kept warning people about the dangers of vaccines. We put her on, we do this great interview. Uh, and then we go to do a best of show mm -hmm. a few years later. The show is wiped from iTunes. The show is wiped from my computer, Ashley's computer, my engineer's computer. We get back on air and we ask if anybody downloaded it to please send it to us. The entire show had been wiped. This was 2012. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that was the first time I was censored. That's first weird. Time. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, you know, if you're down in Austin, we'll bring you over to Alex Jones and really get into some deep conspiracy. Mm. Uh, since we're, yeah, since, hey, since we're, well, we'll do the show with you. How about that? The four That'd of us will go on. Yeah, for sure. Um, he's great. It'll be a blast. Uh, speaking of conspiracy, since you grew up in Hollywood pretty much your entire life, uh, yeah. and you've been around everyone. 
What is your take on the the, the Epstein, uh, the pedophilia that's going on now? Um, I just did an interview a couple weeks ago in L.A. Uh, with some insider Hollywood people, and they said the dam is about to break regarding all of the the pedophiles that are that are not only in the industry but also in in in, uh, in D.C. as well. Is that what you're hearing? I'm not. I'm not only hearing it. I know it's true. So there's, and I don't know. Look, there's a lot of celebrities being called out. Mm-hmm. I don't. There's. I know certain ones that for me because I've been in this industry i you know i dated Corey feldman when i was very young and i remember him saying things to me that he has never ever changed his story on ever ever and i knew certain things back then and it's just what he said is being mirrored by so many people you know people that they didn't share the story and say hey let's talk about this let's all create a story and talk about it no way no way Um, you know, another friend of mine, Marisol Nichols, who works with Tim Ballard, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, for Underground Railroad and our rescue. Mm -hmm. It's it's just some of these horrific stories. Pedophilia and sex trafficking is a massive epidemic. And why isn't the media covering it? Why? Uh, Because they're they're, covering it. I mean, it's rhetorical. It's rhetorical. We all know why, right? Yeah. Disgusting. So many, so many on both sides of the fence, Democrats and Republicans have, have been now arrested. You know, for stuff they found, whether it's pedophilia, pictures, uh, sex trafficking, it's horrible. Why isn't this being covered? Why is Ghislaine Maxwell's documents that were released not covered by anybody? What's going on? I mean, we all know anybody listening is probably understands that, but it's. It's it's yeah it's unbelievably strange. Um, you know the the other strange part about it was you know you're talking about uh, Ghislaine Maxwell um, with some of those docs that got released, in particular the the Clinton one last Friday uh, about him being on the Epstein Island twice. Um, the the DNC just released. Well, it wasn't was, just the fact that he was there. It's that there were like there's pictures and eyewitness of him being with not being with but being in fucking proximity to two clearly underage women underage women yeah but Um, that didn't make any news anywhere at all but then you you look at the dnc list today of of who is going to speak at their virtual convention that Mm. they're holding it's hillary and bill clinton um still no no one has a problem with that and 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 i don't understand it well some people do i look we do clearly there's a tipping point coming where the fucking wholesale murder in the streets of pedophiles is going to be a regularly accepted activity and if it's not then there's going to be a problem i think i think these people just need to be dragged into the street shot in fucking head (laughs) yeah Yeah. right and And this is far worse than when you think pedophilia and you think you know like maybe you know some sick guys like molesting your kid this is this goes way beyond i mean oh yeah torturous it's death it's evil um it's it's way beyond and because uh, it lasts your entire life a- as a child, that's it. Like, then that is ingrained. Yeah. yeah, if, if you it, make it through, correct. Yeah. Yeah, if you make it through, it lasts your entire life. Um, you know, you were talking about Corey Feldman er- earlier. Um, what happened to that documentary? He was supposed to have a documentary that was going to come out where he was going to tell his entire story. It's out, it is it's out. out. And when, when we were at the premiere, we were watching it as we were watching it because he bought his own um bandwidth so he could play it right Mm -hmm. nobody was nobody would pick it up nobody would touch it and uh and as we're watching it it gets hacked i mean it's it was crazy that happened to us one time we had an iraqi intelligence officer on the show we were live on youtube uh he's a buddy of ours and we're talking about iran doing this this and this and all of a sudden our fucking feed goes out like like yeah mid-sentence yeah it was weird as shit uh, who, who, who did he say? Did he go into Michael Jackson or, or anybody like that? And no, you guys got to watch it. I'm not going to tell you because because you. I mean, look, it's out there. It's on the internet. Go to um. Oh gosh, is it his look website? Up, just go to Corey Feldman on on Twitter. You'll see it. You okay. can find. Watch it. It's unbelievable. It's it is. I mean, it's it's crazy, and it's not just one or two witnesses. It's a bunch of people, and it's a bunch of uh, witnesses and people who knew both Corey. So it's, it's worth, it's worth watching. And he's really trying to change some things, uh, you know, for kids in the industry. And, and I hope that, I hope that that goes well. It's uh, my truth doc.com. Okay. So and that's my, Corey Feldman's. Yeah. My truth doc.com. Okay. You can go watch it. It's kind of a pay-per-view thing, but yeah, I've, I've, yeah. I've read some reviews of it. It's not great, but it's, uh, you know, it reminds me and look, this is kind of a touchy subject in any case, but, uh, uh, 
Henry Rollins said back in the day, and this was just about celebrities like who refused to come out of the closet because they didn't want their sexuality to be public or whatever mm-hmm. the fuck. It was like, yeah, I understand that, but there are like kids, teenagers that are getting kicked out of their homes and blowing their fucking brains out on the street because they don't feel like they have a right to exist in this world. You're a rich white person probably. Yeah. Like maybe just swallow your own fucking bullshit a little bit and, and be a, a role model. And I think this is what Corey's doing. Like it's, there's no way this is easy or comfortable for him to do this. No, and, it's and, and you suck. certainly can't get work after that. I mean, let's no. face it, Hollywood's a very small town. And uh, once you come out with something like this, it's over because this is happening more than the general public even knows. And uh, look, we've had some weird names, wild names, tossed around on, on this show and Ross Patterson Revolution in the last few weeks. Um, about who is possibly in this pedophilia ring, and it it was mind altering if it's true. Um, I, I'm sure you know about some big ones. You know, I have heard, and because I, there's so much BS out there right now, and there's mm-hmm. been so much BS about my case and what this and this that unless I know for sure, I'm not going to go and say names because if it's not true, I'll tell you one thing though, and who I find disgusting uh, in her tweets. Uh, Chrissy Teigen. Oh that, yeah, that, what the fuck? I, I mean, that's right there in front of your face. Uh, that it's it's disgusting. It's grotesque. There's something very wrong with her. She deleted uh, like sixty five thousand tweets and blocked yeah. over a million accounts. But she didn't. This is the problem. She didn't do it. How do you delete sixty thousand tweets in a day? How do you get a million people? You don't. Twitter helped her. I have no idea. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah they had to. Right? You know that it, 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 Twitter helped her. That's and that's. We, it's not we're, okay. we're not big uh, Tegan fans. No, on this I show think the either, even so. bigger problem is that John Legend got voted sexiest yep. man alive, and he looks like Arthur from that cartoon. <laughs> I mean, that's ridiculous, man. Come on, give me a fucking break. Like he's a good singer, yes, obviously, but come on, but man. but best looking, no, no, that's, he's definitely not the best no. looking man alive. It's probably uh, Ryan Reynolds. Because he's the perfect combination. I'm going to bang Ryan Reynolds. Oh, what I'm saying right boy. Now. Ryan Reynolds got caught having a, a wedding on a plantation, so he's in hot water oh, today. Yeah, yeah like, uh. <laughs> he's just like, oh, we just thought it was a night. He's Canadian. They don't fucking know. No. There were no plantations in Canada. No, no. Blake Lively's family is all from L.A., so they didn't yeah, know. Yeah, they don't know he shit. He got ma- married on a South Carolina plantation. Yeah, they just thought it looked cool. It's like, all right, canceled. Oh. Yeah, what's your take on the cancel culture? I mean, this is happening. I, I feel like every day some some celebrity goes down. Are you as fed up with it as we are? Uh, you know, I once again, thank God, I'm not watching all of it. I hear about it. I hear some of it. I don't. It's because I'm working on four different projects. I'm, I'm, I'm editing. I'm, I'm doing interviews. I'm doing my two radio shows. I'm doing my two podcasts. I am. Thank God, I've pulled myself out enough of it. But I'll tell you something. The best cancel that I had heard of, the best one, was, and I can't think of his name, but it was a, um, I think it was a senator. <laughs> The senator or representative who came up with canceling the Democratic Party. Did you see that? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's good there's good reason to their last two candidates. Well, let's let's just start with Hillary. So if you're a member of the Democratic Party, right, and you don't know the name Hillary Clinton, and this is the resume, voted for the Iraq War, like pioneered the goddamn crime bill that put three million black dudes in jail, voted for the Patriot Act, voted to reauthorize the Iraq War, was anti-marriage equality until 2013. You're like, uh, no, we're not going to do that. Oh, she's got a vagina. Let's do it. Yep. Let's do it, guys. And yeah. then now we've got fucking Uncle Sleepy Joe Sniffer. Like, he's he's got some kind of puzzle basement in his house, I think, where he's, like, I, you know, luring people I, down I have there. to say something about that because I've been, you know, my dad died of uh, dementia, really body mm-hmm. dementia. Yeah. Uh, my grandfather died of Alzheimer's. Mm-hmm has it now uh, I work with the elderly and have for seven years I, I watch Joe and it's he is he is definite cognitive impairment I'm not a doctor but I'm gonna tell you something there's something very wrong he looks like he's got some kind of dementia yeah, yeah. Now, I, I I would bet on it you know uh, so I don't, I'm really not understanding this and I'm not understanding why uh, people in the Democratic Party I'm an independent you know my mom mm. my dad was a literally like diehard liberal green party you know tree hugging man and my my mother they she's a republican fundraiser you can't be on two separate ends like like polar like, opposites yeah you can't it's it's unbelievable so i'm down the middle here and i'm looking at both things i'm looking at both parties and i don't understand how the democrats aren't up in arms with the fact that they haven't replaced joe biden yeah. 
you know, this man has cognitive impairment. We yeah. can't have him running I, the country. I really thought there was a chance Cuomo was going to get drafted. And I don't think, honestly, I don't think that would have been a terrible choice for them to do that. Not oh, now. The guy who put in, the guy who put in COVID positive elderly. With oh, yeah. On COVID, sure, when yeah. he had a ship with a thousand beds on, on shore right. with doctors. And he puts it, he killed, he is responsible for killing so many elderly mm -hmm. people. I mean, he took the worst of the worst, the worst risk factor, and exposed them to COVID. You know, whether he exposed them to COVID or the flu or whatever, the, you know, any kind of contagious virus, you don't put them in with the, 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 the most at-risk people. And he had other places to put them, but he didn't use that. There, that's yeah. it. Yeah, he's uh, he's crazy, and then is the the brother? Uh, no, it's it's him. He's the one with nipple rings. Well, of all the, yeah, it's it's Andrew Cuomo. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah you what? didn't you didn't see this? Oh, you didn't see picture? this? There's a picture going around of him at his last press conference where he he's clearly got nipple rings. He's wearing like a white polo, and it's kind of translucent, and you can see nipple. rings. You can see outlines. his nipple rings. So this has been going around. This has been going viral over the last week. It yeah, yeah, yeah. So no, this has like been three months now. Uh, it's the, been a little while. The last time. I yeah, look, look it up. It, it's it's fascinating because when you see it, you're like, oh yeah, you definitely had nipple rings. And, as a 65 year old man, it's a weird one for me. Unless you're into some crazy sex shit. Um, maybe. Weird. Yeah, That's maybe. Weird. I mean, it's not great. I don't <laughs> mind it on women, obviously. It's not but, a great. Uh, it's not a great look dudes. on a, on an elderly man. No, no, not at all. Um, <laughs> not at all. Um, I want to I want to talk about something else that's that's uh, kind of crazy because look we we try to at least do a, a little bit of research on our mm -hmm. guests before they come on. Um, when when I was going through uh, your file, so to speak, aka the internet and the Google machine, um, Scientology came up a lot. Are you a Scientologist? Yeah, I study Scientology. Absolutely. Really? But I also yeah, believe in. I'm, you know, as raised Christian in a church as well. So, but yeah, you know, I, I'm very much into God and very, very, very spiritual. And, uh, you know, it's, it's something that has helped me. People find whatever helps them the most and they stick with it. And it's made me a happier person. Yeah. And I use, uh, mushrooms. Dan's a big, Dan's a big mushrooms guy. So and there's LSD no D and, and MDMA and weed. And, uh, yeah. what else is there? Yeah. There's All no, that. there's no God for Dan, but there's a lot of drugs where he, he can find his own God, uh, in his mind. And we appreciate that. Yeah. I have a coloring book yeah. <laughs> that I really like when I get super high. <laughs> um, but with, with Scientology, look again, that comes, you know, that comes with a lot of controversy. Uh, also. I, you, know, I really don't, I, you know, people ask me about it. I talk about it, but everybody, I respect everybody's religion. I expect, and I love religion, by the way. There was a point in my life I didn't. I, I, I felt I was, I was almost angry towards it. It started wars. It, it keeps people separated. But, you know, c coming into my own and, and, and finding what makes me happy made me accept other people's religions more. I'm like, if that makes you happy and that's something you like, who am I to say? You know, do this or do that or follow this or believe this or that. You know, it it's up to you. It's a very personal choice. Absolutely. So, yeah. I, I, I'm, you, know, if you don't believe in anything. Fine. I yeah. It's yeah. Fine. I'll, 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 I re, for me, it was the big Lebowski. Whenever I heard uh, Flea say we believe in nothing, Lebowski, I was like, I'll be a nihilist. Yeah, that's you. Because I just liked the way it sounded. <laughs> Didn't do any research. Dan's easily swayed. Uh, no. Very easily swayed by I film. Am, yeah. Uh, in television and coloring books, yeah, and coloring books as well. But um, you, you how, know, how you know, there are adult coloring books, right? I do, I do know yeah, that. That's a real thing. How there did you? Are, there actually are. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's totally real. Uh, oh, how boy. did you get into Scientology personally? Um, I'm always curious as to how that that process works. I had a neighbor um, who was who was a Scientologist, and uh, he was telling me you'd have to take a test and and, and everything else. Um, what made you seek out Scientology? And forgive I me for asking. I'm, I'm just super fascinated by it. Um, I had a friend who was very successful and always had his head on straight. Like, wasn't emotionally up and down. Just, you know, did, of course he had normal emotions, but he just seemed, I don't know, there was a, a peace about him. And, and he, I, it was just this, I'm like, what do you do? Why are you so, you know, are you a med are you Buddhist? What are you doing? And he's like, no, I study Scientology. He's like, it's just made me a happier, more peaceful, more serene person. I said, well, what is it? I was so like you guys, I'm so interested. Like what the hell is it? Yeah. What is it? And he just took me to a church. He's like, here, find out for yourself. And that, that is the most important thing you can do is go and find out for yourself. Don't listen to the media who doesn't tell the truth about stuff. I listen to this stuff. 
And I go, that's not true. Why aren't you suing them? He goes, well, if we keep suing everybody, we're just gonna, it's gonna be just constant lawsuits. I'm like, but they're lying. This is a lie. This doesn't happen in Scientology. What this about uh, what about Leah Remini? Because she had some pretty harsh things to say, and she was in the organization for quite a while, right? I don't. All, all I know is that I knew a friend of Leah's. Mm-hmm. This is way before I started studying Scientology, and um, a very good friend of hers. And I'll tell you something. She. It was the worst friendship relationship she ever had. She had was treated so poorly and so badly. And I remember hearing this before I ever even, you know, walked into a, a church. And so that's all I know about her. I I don't know her. I don't, I've never met her. I mean, that I've seen her. Sure. You know, uh, I don't, but- I don't watch her stuff. I don't, I, you know, so I don't know. I don't, and I'm not going to. It's like, it's like, you know, what people are like, well, why didn't you watch the show? I said, well, if you were Jewish and there were a bunch of people who were anti-Semites and they hated Jewish people, would you watch that show? Why would you want to- well, there's a fine line between somebody being an anti-Semite and somebody being like anti-Zionist, for example. Like that's a that's a pretty big divide. I think what Remedy had to say was less about the doctrine and theology surrounding uh, Scientology, more about the behavior of particularly the executives, right? I don't. You know what? I because I haven't said I don't want to comment on it, <clears> and I don't know, and so I don't. You know, I this is again. I don't want what people had done have have, have done to me, mm-hmm. and so she does this and she does that, and it's like. A, you don't know me. You've never met me. So I just don't comment and I'm not going to. But all I know is what it's done for me has changed my life, has made me happier, more successful. I was a very angry kid. And I think growing up with somebody who is uh, cruel to you, mean to you for no reason for so many years and for so long, I resented my dad for it. I was very angry. And I went to a lot of therapy. I've tried it all. Like You're right? talking I'm about trying- your shitbag stepmom, right? That's my yeah. words. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dan, yeah. Dan had a bad uh, relationship with with uh, his parents growing up as well. My so dad, he, yeah, he can relate. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I, I mean, I've done a lot of therapy <clears throat> trying to get rid of it. Right, Try, uh, really a lot of therapy, and it would help a little here and there. And then all of a sudden, I do a few weeks of you know a thing called auditing, mm-hmm. and I'm not as angry. I don't hate her as much. I can actually use her name. Like before, I couldn't even say I was. It was so full of anger and hatred, and a lot, a lot of it just it's like okay, let me look at the situation for what it is without all this anger and hatred and go out. Oh. And there was a point where I went, I feel sorry for this person. It wasn't hatred. It was like I feel sorry that she has to live in a world where she thinks that everybody's out to get her, or she thinks everybody is gonna, you know, um, do her harm that she does it first, or that she can't accept love because we were great kids. We would have loved her. She would have been, you know, we had a great family. We, my mom, my stepdad, we all love each other. And she would have been accepted into that too. And she would have been loved. And she can't accept that. What a sad state of being, you know? And I could look at it that way instead of with malice and hatred and, and like venom. And it was, I cannot tell you, when that lifted, I felt like a different person, not carrying that around. So that was a huge thing for me that 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 Scientology gave me huge. Right. Uh, yeah, that's uh, essentially cognitive behavioral therapy. It's like exposure therapy. That's the reason people journal and write, and mm-hmm. it's nothing unique. Whatever it necessarily. is that, that helped you, great, you know. But that's yeah. what helped me. It was wonderful. Well, what helps me is uh, seeing weird shit to people on the internet, mostly. Yeah, Dan's a huge troll on the internet. I can't so. help myself. I don't know what the problem with me is, to be honest. It he lo- he loves problems. it. Yeah, he loves it. Um, by the way, was the guy you were talking about? Was it Tom Cruise by any chance? Because I met Tom Cruise, and I've told this story on the show before. I've never met somebody so locked in and focused to a conversation um, to an individual that he doesn't know than Tom Cruise. And I, like, there's only two or three instances in, in all of Hollywood where I was like, that person stopped the room, and it was the most impressive person I've ever met, and it was Tom Cruise. And when he when he walked, because he t- he talked to me like uh, he'd known me for 30 years, right? Even though 5,000 people in the room, his eyes are on Tom Cruise at all times. And I remember I turned to my publicist afterwards and I was like, fuck, man, if that's what Scientology is, sign me the fuck up because I've never (laughs) met somebody more focused and locked in. And then, but he went from, I watched him go from person to person, like later on throughout this, we were at some uh, award show and uh, uh, the way he talked to everybody, um, he knew everybody's names, back history, family, like he, he sat down and talked to you about your entire life and you were like, Jesus, man. 
I don't think I've ever seen someone more focused. So if that's the guy you were talking about, I get it. Who do you think would win in a steering contest between Tom Cruise and that guy from the Heaven's Gate cult that didn't blink for like four hours in that oh, video that time? Guys. Remember that guy? Yeah. It's Tom Cruise. We're done. We're done. It's you Tom guys. Cruise. It's got to be oh, Tom okay. Cruise. I Look, I'm, I'm all TC all day over here. I think he's an amazing human being. I don't know him. He's, yeah. but you know, what he's done and who he is. And he does so much that people don't know about what mm. he gives for humanitarian causes. And um, he's, he's, he's really an incredible person. I've said hi. That's about it. I, you know, he seems like a cool guy. I am not, you know, I, it's, it's funny. People think all these celebrities are, I don't, I don't go around like meeting all the celebrities that, that happen to study right. Scientology. You know, that's not. Yeah. yeah, that would be weird if you all just hung out all the time. Yeah, hung out all the time. <laughs> and the other thing is, like, you know, I've done so many films with Scientologists that I didn't know until later. Because yeah. it's not, it's not like you guys ever bring it up either. They're like, not really proselytizing. No, now. so you, you don't. You, Oh, it's, it's a very personal choice and look, yeah. I, I love it and if people you know they they come to me and like what are you doing you know i need to try this or whatever oh hey try this here read this book is it you know if it if you have a cognition and go this is great i like it try it great sure. if you don't okay i mean i this is this is where it's so weird when i hear things that are i'm not even gonna i'm not gonna even repeat some of the the bs that i hear because it's like that it, it, it's so far from what we know and what we study and then you hear the stuff and it it's it's sad i don't i don't understand it but you know. yeah and, and like i was saying earlier controversy seems to follow you in like all aspects of everything what else are you working on right now that is that is super controversial or crazy um because i feel like whatever is going to be next has got to be off the rails like it's it's got to be nuts i know your podcast just got relaunched again the red pill podcast yeah. um yeah. what are the other projects you're working on right now i mean i have my i'm I have this, the project that I'm doing that I can't talk about, mm. but that is going to be, yes, it's going to be a bit controversial and it's going to be a bit out there for sure. <laughs> and, uh, she and just, I, she so, just walks around town with a baseball bat looking for hornets nest to smash. And yeah. I'm a fan. I like. like that. That's, that's what we like here. Yeah. If you're single, okay. Dan's single, I think, <laughs> look, the two of you guys together, uh, you know, he's got a theology degree too. Mm. There you go. <laughs> yeah. For real. Not, Perfect. <laughs> I'm sure that's going to um, help. <laughs> um, I, I mean, I do the Red Pill podcast, of course. It's just it's a passion. It's fun. I love it. Uh, then my 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 radio show, uh, my Gerby's Law, which is my law show. Mm -hmm. And then I have a mortgage show. I, I've been doing mortgage shows since early 2000. So that another mortgage kind of finance show is coming back on the air. I'm doing that. So we're working on that right now. Um, and then I have my vitamin company called Breakthrough Naturally, which is all about uh, vitamins for emotional health. And I, I tried these vitamins once, and I said, okay, hold on a second. This is this I can get behind. I've been asked to sell health stuff and vitamin stuff, and this I'm like, look, unless it actually works for me and I use it, I'm not putting my name on it. And I tried this, and I said, uh, what the hell is this? Yeah. This this works if I'm having any kind of like anxiety or feel low or whatever. I, and I stay on my vitamins, I feel fantastic. And so I, I opened this company called Breakthrough Naturally and the, the, the vitamins that we sell are phenomenal. So that, that I work on that too. I've been, I've been in, in Forbes with that and uh, Yahoo Finance. Um, gosh, we've been in, we've been in quite a, quite a, a few big, big publications about it. And there's 34 different studies done on them. And, and I, I just, I'm into health. And I'm into, I'm into emotional health and, and wellness. So that's what I do. Gotcha. Speaking of mortgages, are we headed for a huge crash here coming up? Yeah, you know, um, it's a possibility, but people have been saying that for so many years. Sell your house. It's going to go down. Sell mm -hmm. it. You know, how many, for the last four or five years, I've heard that now. So, uh, you know, and, and look at what's happening with the market. You, you just don't know. I, you know, at, at this point, I thought everybody, everything would have crashed already, but it hasn't. So I think there's going to be a commercial real estate crash way before there's a residential real estate crash. Yeah, I, I would put the residential crash uh, Two, next year. Yeah. I, That's, I, that seems I'd put it me. next year. Commercial real estate's coming really quickly, but yeah. Um, are you still in, in L.A. right now? I am. I'm in Los Angeles right now. I just got back. I, I like to be in Vegas a lot. Mm. Um, yeah, we, we, we were talking about this before we went on air. With the mass exodus that's going on in Los Angeles right now, um, Dan and I were just there filming two weeks ago, and uh, the, the homelessness crisis is mm. is the craziest I've I've seen there. And, and you know, I lived there for 18 years. Um, I mean, it it feels like it happened almost overnight there. Uh, are you getting out of there as well? And, and real estate wise, uh, what are you telling your clients and people to do 
uh, with uh, with LA? What we mostly do on the show is just uh, rates and mortgages for a mortgage company. So we will talk about the market. We'll talk about what what it's affecting it, how it's affecting you know the rates and and your home and your values and mm. you know we'll, we'll just talk about different programs that you can get on, from your home to refinance uh, from from refinancing. Uh, to you know the veterans loans to what, whatever whatever it may be uh, whatever is out there in the programs we we just we talk about that we give a rate if they like it they call you know the bank who's hired us to do their show and that's basically what, what we do but I don't like sell real estate I don't you know yeah I've been doing that for for a long time so I just have to keep up on the programs <laughs> I wonder if there's any data right now about how many uh, how many residential homeowners are behind on their mortgage with the expectation that they can't get evicted right now because that bill is going to come due at some point, right? I believe it's September, right? Uh, I don't know. I think they're clear through not, August. It's not going to be like uh, you still owe your fucking mortgage from all those months. Oh, yeah, yeah. You yeah. just didn't owe it at the time. Correct. Right. right? Yeah. So, like, and there's people not paying rent. Like, there's actually, yeah. they know they can get evicted. So, poor people who've like rented their houses out, there's people staying in them that they, they can't pay the rent or they're yeah. not paying. Yeah. They're gonna squat for a long time, as um, long as they're able. That was sure. a big thing because I was in LA during the the last crash in 08, mm. that housing crash, and that's what happened to a lot of people. They were just squatting until you know the what was it, eighteen months or whatever. It was something crazy. The and squatter laws in, in fucking California are wild as shit. Oh, it's nuts! Like you can't even let somebody stay at your house for thirty three days without them gaining like permanent access to your house. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's wild as shit, man. Carrie, what we're saying is, uh, Dan needs a place to stay for thirty days. Yeah, I'm gonna in sleep LA. in your basement. Is that okay? It's gonna be me and Joe Biden down there hiding from the world. <laughs> but he's not allowed to stiff me. I've already told him. You can you can pay me rent. You can come stay. <laughs> I'll pay you the first month, and then I can't get evicted after that. Yeah, <laughs> and then after that, you can squat. Forever. It'll be me and Joe Biden down there making fucking videos, buddy. <laughs> yeah, just going online, and we have a hard time on this show making fun of Joe Biden uh, simply because it. it I, we he really does have dementia for sure yeah. and it's Absolutely. sad what has happened and you're like god damn it man please get him off get him off the air i watched that interview yesterday which was pure Oof. madness i mean what the fuck is he even talking about I, I don't know like honestly he he said something what two weeks ago about how he's really looking forward to doing debates with trump like no you're not joe no you're definitely not in your team and your party certainly you're not looking forward to that shit yeah uh, but it's gonna be great it's gonna be like that speech that uh, adam sandler gave in uh in uh billy madison where the guy was like this is the worst thing i've ever heard get the fuck out of here uh it's it's bad but i feel like even though he does like we get we cut him some slack because he clearly has dementia but still when the guy was of sound mind he wrote the crime bill that put millions of black dudes in jail for bullshit yeah all right so fuck that guy yeah exactly what are you doing for election night this this year uh not going to be in los angeles <laughs> yeah, fuck that <laughs> yeah, there's no way <laughs> We're, there's a group of friends and I were going to a small, we're, we're literally getting out of the city, we're getting out of the state. Yeah. Mm. yeah, well, look, we're doing a live show in Austin, Texas that night. Uh, we're going live for seven hours uh, for, yeah. for the election. So you're, you're welcome down there. Maybe we'll go there. Yeah, yeah. plenty mm -hmm. of veterans, plenty of laughs, plenty of booze. Some Medal of Honor recipients, some musicians. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Right thing starts. <laughs> oh, you say guns? Yeah, I mean, I'm. Care we all have guns. Yeah, we all, we all, obviously, we all yeah. have guns. But uh, let me ask you that: if if Trump gets reelected, well, first of all, do you think he'll get reelected? I mean, let me tell you something. I have had, and it's really weird. People who are hardcore Democrats. I'm talking people in the industry that are very left. Tell me that they cannot vote for for Biden. And this is in the last two weeks. I had two friends come to me and tell me that they can't vote for Biden. They, they definitely think there's something wrong with him cognitively. And then one friend admitted she was gonna vote for Trump. Oof. And I'm like, okay, these two, I mean, I'm talking, they are left. Right. Left. And they told me they're voting for Trump. I mean, the other one basically said it, uh, you know, actually straight up said I'm voting for Trump. And, and I, I was like, okay, if these two, if these two, two women who are extremely, you know, left and, and, and they have been Democrats that as long as I've known them are now saying they can't vote for Biden and they're voting for Trump. There's going to be a lot of people who they call mm. the silent majority voting for Trump. And if that is the case, I think he's probably going to win. Yeah, I mean, look, we're under 90 days now at this point, so um, we'll see. But I'm, I'm always curious as to what people are hearing out in Los Angeles, because, look, let's face it, it's as, it's as left as you could possibly get. And um, but I think a lot of those people are fucking Bernie folks 
So the question is, that's what I think. Yes. The question is going to be, <laughs> and I don't know who it is at this point because it seems like the choices have been narrowed to Susan Rice and and Kamala, Kamala Harris, Harris. Yeah. Neither one of whom are particularly interesting to that wing of the party. Right. And Joe Biden certainly isn't if they listen to what he's saying. Mm-hmm. Like apparently, black people aren't diverse of thought. Yeah, as of yesterday. Like he he, he basically he yeah. basically read a definition of what a monolith is mm-hmm. and then tweeted the next day. All wasn't saying they were monolith. Like, yeah, yeah. no, that's exactly what the <laughs> fuck you said, dumb dumb. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if either one of those VP candidates can pull that vote back. I don't see how it happens. Uh, and we saw what happened in 2016. I think that what she's saying was probably the case in 2016 as well. I bet a lot of those people voted for Trump. Mm. A lot of the Bernie bros or whatever the fuck you want yeah. to call them. I really believe that happened. Uh, obviously, they would never admit to it in public because they would get crucified. But I believe that happened. Sure. Are you going to vote, Carrie? I'm going to vote. I I don't miss elections, and I and I've been voting since I was able to. Uh, you know, I I stay I stay very neutral. I stay independent. I have friends who are extremely right. I have friends who are extremely left. I like you know what what I've noticed in the last couple of years is when when we used to sit down for Thanksgiving dinner or Christmas dinner with both sides of the the, the family, mm-hmm. uh, people would talk. Now there's no talking. It's if you don't believe what I believe you're this this and this if you don't understand this you're a fucking sheeple if you don't i mean it's there's no communication there's no common sense there's no down the middle anymore there's no hey you know what i like what trump has done for the you know sex trafficking and all the bills he's signing uh but i don't like the fact that you know he's he's so far against the environment we don't like that maybe we can compromise there's nothing like that Oh, you know, the Democrats are right here. The Republicans are right here. Maybe let's let's compromise. There's none of that. There's no compromise. There's no conversation. It's it's hatred. And I do blame uh, CNN and Fox for tearing the nation mm. apart. Because what, what you have here is ratings for dividing people and creating fear and anger. And I am I being in the media myself, doing news myself, being in talk radio. You know, it you you have to make something salacious and sexy and something so you get the ratings. And this has been what I've seen in the last couple of years uh, is is horrific. They're, yeah. it, it's, they're well, in you, the nation for ratings. If you remember, I think it was like uh, 2004. John Stewart went on Crossfire, that old CNN show, mm-hmm. which was, I think it was Tucker Carlson, and I can't remember who the other guy was, the left person. Uh, it was a Democrat and Tucker Carlson. I don't remember who it was, but he, he came on their show, and he goes, you guys think you're doing some kind of service. Maybe it was uh, the Cajun guy. What's his name? Raging Cajun. What's his name? Oh, uh, Carville. Carville. James Carville. James Carville, Carville, yeah. Carville, yeah. Oh, James Carville. Now, he was married. Him and his wife were on opposite sides, yeah, too. Yeah, opposite, yeah. Yeah, yeah for years. I mean, they're married, still married, so right? far as I know, yeah. Yeah, and- I mean, one's a Democrat, one's a yeah. Republican. I even wrote a book on it. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but like, yeah. Uh, so John Stewart came on the on the show one time because he was that was when he was gaining steam as a real voice in news because everybody else is full of shit. Mm-hmm. So they wanted to have him on the show. And he goes, "You guys are sitting here thinking you're doing a favor by projecting these polar opposite opinions, letting the people decide. No, you're just building division. Yeah. You're assholes, both of you." Yeah. And he called it. <laughs> he called it in 2004, and really, Holy it started back in the mid 90s. But he called it in 2004, and look at what it's turned into. It's nonsense. The, like the trust in the media is at an all-time low. Mm-hmm. The vast majority of people on both sides of the aisle do not like the media. They, they don't trust what they're hearing in the news media. So what's the point? And that I woman mean, they're lying to us about so much stuff, and they're not. They're not. They're censoring. Mm-hmm. I mean, how do you censor the president of the United States? I don't care if you hate him, like him, whatever. How do you censor him? How do you censor doctors with their expert opinion? And how do you? debunk and i mean discredit all of these experts i'm talking virologists epidemiologists doctors from all you know whether they're you know emergency room doctors frontline doctors um uh you know general practitioners they're all being discredited when they come out and say hey hydroxychloroquine with the z-pack saved my patients yeah what why is that a why is why and and then Fauci himself said this in 2005 out of uh the the journal it was, it was published where where Fauci Fauci says and I actually have it right here have you guys read this yet on on your on no, your show no fire away okay uh, this is I did this on my I was I was debating a uh a man on my show last 
last Sunday, nice guy, Harry, who's the lawyer, but he's a health attorney who didn't know any of this because he's telling us how how great these vaccines are going to be. And I said, there's no safety testing. Oh, we're doing 30,000 people with, I said, what about long-term yeah. testing? Yeah. I mean, they haven't even figured out the flu vaccine yet. It hasn't stopped the flu. So you're going to put this vaccine in with no safety testing, zero safety testing. And um, so this is what, this is what Fauci said about hydroxychloroquine. And this was, this was uh, published in the virology journal, the official publication of Dr. Fauci's national Institute of health. This is, was published in uh, August 22, uh, 2005. It says chloroquine is a potent inhibitor of SARS coronavirus infection and spread. Uh, it, it goes on to say that it basically is not only a um, prophylactic, but a therapeutic, it gives you a therapeutic advantage over the coronavirus. It also says, so HCQ functions as both a cure and a vaccine. In other words, it's a wonder drug for the coronavirus, said Fauci uh, in uh, Fauci's NIH in 2005. You can look this up in the Virology Journal. He is talking about how uh, it's phenomenal for viruses. Well, I this mean, this is isn't words. right. Whenever I whenever I hear uh, or whenever there's any kind of situation in news, people often ask me like, where do I go for news, and then how do I determine what's real or not? Mm-hmm. I ask myself who benefits from this situation going the way it's going, and that's usually what's happening. People in power anywhere are assholes for the most part. Yeah, like it's it's that that maxim that power corrupts is not no. They didn't just make that shit up. It's real. And whenever I see a drug that's cheap and readily available that can deal with the most problematic thing we've had viral wise in a hundred years, and then seeing where big pharma's come over the last twenty five or so years, like of course they would fucking murder you if you came out with a cure on your own. Yeah. And, and well, they of have. Course, how many people have been murdered for saying they have a cure for things? Oh, for cancer especially, dead. yeah. Dead. You yeah. know, I mean, it's and it's happened over and over again. It's not, this isn't you know, like a one-off. There are people who, there were 85 de- dead doctors that disappeared down in um, South America uh, for, for saying that well, it was a clinic and they were curing cancers and, and Lyme disease and all this stuff. I, I had a friend who went there and got his Lyme disease cured. And all the doctors that were at this clinic are dead. And you can look it up. You can say 85, I think it's, if you look under 85 dead doctors, South America, they actually wrote about it. You know, it's like, well, you can't, you can't, can't be doing that. Can't be curing people of cancer. Yeah, it, it, this this whole thing feels like some sort of this COVID thing uh, seems like a population experiment to me where uh, I just you, you can't pay me enough money to buy into a story that that one guy ate a bat at a fresh market in in Wuhan wet, wet market. Yeah, yeah, wet market. And it, 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 I don't think people really believe that. I don't No like, one, I, I, No one believes that shit. Everybody that's uh, that has any fucking semblance of intelligence knows that that virus was created I, I, in a lab I, I, in China. I, I, yeah. Right. I do so much stuff that it's like it's yeah. like why is this out in the media? Why isn't the media talking about this? Right? Why isn't the media talking about all the other countries using hydroxychloroquine who are successful? I, you know, who, who saved their patients? There's a hospital in Florida um, who they they lost. When I, I I interviewed a nurse from there, and they said they hadn't lost anybody. Afterward, they lost a man who was at 87 and heavy. Uh, but they had, up until then, up until a few weeks ago, they hadn't lost one person from COVID. Not one because what did they use? Hydroxychloroquine and uh, z pack right. right? Another one in Texas, same thing. All of the people she treated, same exact thing. Doctors come out, I'm 15 of them, and they get slammed and discredited talking about how they saved almost 400 people with hydroxychloroquine. I mean, and then, oh, what about, then, then you hear all about side effects, side effects. There are people taking uh, uh, drugs uh, every single day that are in your cabinets that yeah. one of the side effects is death. Yeah. If you're going to die anyways, take, take, I mean, there was a Democrat that came out in Michigan who said, you know, she was pretty much on her deathbed. And if she hadn't heard Trump say he was taking hydroxychloroquine, uh, she would have never done it. And she doesn't think she'd be alive today. So she took the hydroxychloroquine mm. and it's back and she's alive. By the way, him uh, and his entire staff are taking it as a prophylaxis. Yeah, they are. Yeah, and yeah, they yeah. have been this whole time. I, I know we had a guest on the show, uh, The Bachelor. We had uh, Colton Underwood on the show. And uh, he had coronavirus and the same thing. He took hydroxychloroquine and uh, and a Z-Pack and he was like, I'm better. Like everything was better after that. I mean, it, it makes sense. It treats mm-hmm. what's wrong with you that, that COVID caught. Like you, you never really die from a disease. You die from complications. Like you don't die from pneumonia. You get pneumonia and you get weak. Your lungs stop working or mm-hmm. you, your immune system goes down. Just like HIV or AIDS, your immune system gets fucked up and some little thing fucks you up, right? It's always like some secondary cause with... 
COVID, it's it's typically uh, inflammation in your fucking lungs, right? Yep. Uh, yeah. If you can figure out how to stop inflammation in your lungs, it, it, it doesn't it, matter. Lungs. Yeah, if it gets if your it, lungs. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah because I've had so many friends now that have had it. I interviewed one uh, a few months ago on my show. I just mm. put her on. It was, actually, I did that on uh, Instagram Live because I'm like, look, this woman is going through it right now. She's actually in the throes of you know the coronavirus. Mm. Let's talk about it. She got on the air. She's like, I feel like I have a really bad cold. Mm -hmm. you know, maybe you know a, a flu, but it's not as bad as the flu I had last year. Right. And she tested positive for COVID, and that she had it. Uh, and I have quite a few friends now that have gotten over it. I mean, it's a it's a 99.8% recovery rate, but nobody talks about that, right? 0.00046%, let me say that again, 0.00046% of the United States of America have died from COVID, which is, you know, every life counts. But, you know, when I say that, they're like, oh, you don't care. Well, did anybody care about my dad when he died of uh, Louis body dementia. Where's the where's the demand in trying to find out where that came from? Where, why aren't you standing up and saying we must have a, you know an end to this disease that is that it that will has a hundred percent death rate, right? right? So what what what's going on here? You know why is this? I, I, I guess I look at stats, and when you when you say that Stanford did did you read did you guys read the Stanford? Uh, article that came out that the, all their their published articles I, I did, the one yeah. from about a month ago yeah. you mean yeah 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 yeah, yeah. and he's saying you know that he they didn't believe in the lockdowns they didn't basically believe it was a pandemic and they thought i mean some of these numbers are are unbelievable How, did you this is here here they are here right um stanford university's disease prevention chairman says covid's infection fatality rate is close to zero for people under 45. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, this person died. That person died. We're looking at stats. We're not looking at you know this person dying. And that, yeah. This is a stat. This is a real statistic. Well, right? look on look on CNN any day, and you'll see seven year old or forty year old health, otherwise healthy died of corona. Like yeah, that's anecdotal. That's not fucking journalism. But they also and it's not had science. underlying conditions. That's yeah. you know like well, most of America, most of America has underlying conditions. It's called being a fat fuck. Yeah, yeah, right. Like we're unhealthy as shit here, and we wonder why <laughs> every other country is doing better than us. <laughs> like, cause we're, cause we fucking go, we don't eat fucking homemade meals anymore. We eat Cheetos with fucking like, not even ranch dressing. It's like f fucking some, uh, Frito-Lay version of ranch dressing. Put a little it's bit sitting, of blue cheese It's on sitting that, out on the shelf. It's not even refrigerated. You think that's okay to put in your fucking body? No, bitch. Yeah. You're going to die. Yeah. They, uh, Hardee's has got the, uh, Frisco burger. It's got about a thousand calories in it. Yeah. You don't want to give that up. Dude. Well, I only eat meat. It's I, true. I don't eat the bread. So you're a uh, you know what you should watch. I mean, that's actually way better for you. Um, the, without the bread, the meat without the bread is great. It's yeah. better for you. I'm I'm a vegan and vegetarian. Mm. I I don't eat that. But um, there's a there's a movie called Game Changers. Have, have either one of you seen it? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My wife is huge into that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that doesn't go into oh poor animals and this and you should become a vegetarian for animal. It has nothing to do with that. The statistics on that was unbelievable. Um, that's why I, I tell everybody, look, if you're a meat eater, you want to be athletic, you're doing this, watch Game Changers. It, I thought it was pretty interesting. I've seen it. I think it's a commentary on a number of things. One is that Americans are real stupid. Like, <laughs> think about the carnivore diet. Yes, you can do that, and there are ways to make it work. You might have to supplement, but really you need to, like, if you're doing some kind of radical shit like that, whether it's veganism or a straight fucking meat diet or whatever the fuck it is, you better be getting your blood levels checked every fucking three right. months. Because yeah. otherwise, everybody's body's a little bit different. You don't know what your body fucking needs until yeah. you test it out. But Americans don't do that. Like, oh, I can eat bacon all day? Hell yeah, brother. Yeah. Heart attack. Uh, and they do. And yeah. they do. It's, and it's fucking it's, stupid. Uh, yeah. The common sense is missing in, in a lot, you know, not only politically, but the way people treat their bodies and then expect them to work or the way yeah. people take and expect them to get better. And it's like, you know, what, what was it? Hippocrates said, let food be thy medicine. Mm. We've gone so far away from that. Oh, GMOs are, I mean, they're people that don't even understand what a, you know, genetically modified organism is and what it does and, and how it's tested on animals and how they, they get sick from it and die from it or have seizures from it and they're feeding it to us and we don't they don't have to label it they've paid enough lobbyists to go into you know uh dc and say look we don't want to tell people that they're eating food that's been completely engineered not to be food right. uh unbelievable yes, so you have it's... to find stuff that says non-gmo or mm. organic I mean, it's it, this is terrifying. Most countries would never allow that, and they don't allow it. We're one of the only idiotic countries mm. that allows it. 
Yeah, like if you go to, uh, I, I encourage, if you, if you guys get a chance to visit Europe especially, go to, first go to Italy. And when, when we're allowed there, by the when way. We're, when we're allowed back, yeah. <laughs> but go to Italy, yeah. go to Italy specifically somewhere in the southern, like, I don't know, like uh, central part of Italy on the west coast, near the Amalfi Coast. All those like Sor- like Sorrento that. and south of there, you'll see a lot of cheese manufacturers. And you can, every fucking cheese manufacturer you go to, they have a book that's this goddamn thick with all the certifications of how that cheese is made. Like that is normal there to make sure that you're actually producing quality food for people. Yeah. Like that seems like an important thing. But yeah, some, it, somewhere in the fucking uh, 1950s or so, 1940s and 50s, we decided like, oh, corn syrup, hell yeah. Yeah. Doop, 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 doop. <laughs> like we're so fucking stupid. God damn it, man. We're the dumbest motherfuckers on earth. <laughs> I mean, it really is true. It's like we have so many allergies, so many sicknesses. It's like nobody's saying get your – you never hear this. You never hear, hey, you know, make sure your vitamin levels are checked because not mm-hmm. only will it affect your entire body, like you said, if you're a vegan, you have to take supplements. Mm-hmm. We are not living in 70 years ago to 100 years ago when there was actually vitamins in the soil. We have mm-hmm. overharmed everything. So being a vegan, I got so sick, so sick. I didn't d- take supplements, which you have to now especially the, like different diets carn- carnivore diet or paleo or whatever you it's very important to test and make sure you're getting the right nutrition very but then when you start to actually uh, have uh, mental issues because you're sick here like so many so many of our mental illnesses are caused by body issues underlying health issues mm. not a not exactly a a mental illness. So if you heal your body or whatever, I have an entire book that shows all these different kinds of illnesses and what then, how your your mental status is affected by it. It's unbelievable. So if you cure this issue with your body, well then this stuff goes away with your your, your brain or your mind or your whatever. Johns Hopkins uh, did a really good study called the gut uh, what is it? The brain gut connection. Is yeah. What it's right. So my, my wife and her mom are, yeah. 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 They're, they're way into this and they, yeah. they fully believe this a hundred percent. Well, I mean, it, there's pretty good data on it now. Like if you have bad gut health, generally speaking, mm-hmm. your homeostasis is fucked, which means your synaptic firing is fucked, which means your brain's going to be fucked. Yeah. That's how it right. goddamn works, that's, man. That's right. It's, it's, that's right. it's not complicated. It's also not hard to do this stuff. Like some of it is, some of it can be cost prohibitive, but now you can go on Amazon and order like a test kit for 40 bucks or something that you could do once a quarter, once mm-hmm. every three months and know exactly what's in your body, right? There's no excuse not to be doing this shit at, at this point. So if you're- Totally, if, and, and probiotics, just if, yeah. if people are listening, they can't afford anything, get on probiotics, please, and get on a, get on a, a some type of, um, I guess, you know, a, a vitamin mm-hmm. that's not processed. Uh, if you do a raw food vitamin or a whole food vitamin, just take that and get on some something that will help your gut. It will help everything else. If you're having anxiety, you're experiencing anxiety, get on some calcium, get on magnesium. That does help. It really, really does. I know because I've done it. So it, it, it really is important to keep your gut clean and to keep, mm. keep it healthy. That will give you better um, emotional health. And sure. White Claw. Dan and I drink a lot, yeah, of, a lot white of White Claw. Yeah, a lot of White Claw helps um, for sure. Yeah. yeah. What's We're, White Claw? Oh, what's White Claw? Oh, Sorry. Carrie, you got to come. You got to come out to Austin. Um, Dan's get, Dan. I think there's a whole new world that you need to be introduced to outside of LA, and uh, just let, let Dan take you on a journey. Wait, did you White say Claws. a whole? Did you say a whole new world because it's from Aladdin? Because uh, racist. You're yeah, can, canceled. <laughs> You're canceled. Get the canceled. fuck out. I'm canceled. Everybody's canceled. Carrie, this is the point in the show we get to the drinking bro of the week, which is someone who has inspired you or helped you in this life. Mm. Uh, who would you like to give the drinking bro of the week to? I mean, my dad didn't drink much, but my dad, I guess. Well, it's not about drinking. It's not about drinking. The, so drink, the drinking bros thing, by the way, yeah. is about uh, veterans who get out of the military and then they're back in their hometowns isolated and don't have anyone to hang out with that knows what the fuck they've been through. So drinking bros means you never have to drink alone, but you can show up and drink water if you want. It's not about booze necessarily. That's Although awesome. we, that is awesome. we yeah. are drunk bastards, but we don't That's expect awesome. everyone to be. Yeah. So can I give it to my dad? Is that absolutely. possible? Absolutely, absolutely. A lot of people do, and it, and it's always I'm always curious when they don't, because typically then you've had a bad relationship with your father. But uh, well, yeah. also a lot of people don't have motherfucking Casey Kasem as a dad. I uh, know it's That's, crazy. It's pretty. Yeah. He was a veteran, so yeah. there you go. Yeah, veterans. 
Um, and that's an, it's another thing too for veterans. They get put on so many different types of drugs, and they're so it, it is they're so screwed up. And yeah. I I cannot tell you once again. Please get healthy if you're listening to this. Please, please, please. Not just you know. It's so important to get your health together, and and I know you guys talk about it. But if you do get 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 your gut get your gut healthy, things will start to change for you. I know this, I do this, my ex-boyfriend works with veterans and that's what he does. Like he literally helps them uh, with, you know, with nutrition yeah, yeah. and lives change, like completely change. So it's very, very important. That's good. I can go into it, I'm not going to, there's a whole long thing I do about it, but it, it really is, it really does change people. Well, you go to her show and see that. Absolutely, uh, yeah, yeah. So, tell, tell everybody where, where they can find you on social media yeah. and, uh, and your radio show and all that stuff. I mean, I'm mostly, mostly I'm on Instagram and Facebook. I have, you know, my public Facebook page and then I have my private one. And, but if you do Instagram, I, I am the only person that answers my, my mail. I do not let anybody speak for me. I do not let anybody comment for me. So it's me. You'll, 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 you'll actually be talking to me. So, and if it, if you don't DM me, if you really want something quick, write it on a post. And then I go through all my, all my, you know, all my comments. It's me. Okay, so at Carrie Kasem on uh, on on Instagram, did you get your own name? Yeah. Look at you. You're Congratulations. Lucky. I mean, there can't be jacked. a lot of Carrie Kasems out there. I, I no. found it. Yeah, yeah. It's not, so like, I have the- not like Dave Smith or something. Yeah, exactly. Uh, one question before we, we, we get out of here. Uh, since you grew up in town for years and years and years, your, your dad was, you know, uber famous. Who was who the, uh, the most famous relationship you've been in? Did you date somebody growing up where you're like, oh man, no way. You you dated you dated uh Jason Patrick. I mean, I dated people who are, you know, I don't talk about it, but I dated a few pretty famous people, but yeah. Come no, on, I, give us one name, Carrie. <laughs> no, I mean people know I dated Corey Feldman, so there you go. Oh, I mean, all right. Shit. Yeah. Dur- was it during was it during the Lost Boys, like that whole era? No, it was when I in my early twenties. Early twenties and he was in his twenties. We we were I mean I'm old now, so I, I mean that was a long, long time ago. No, <laughs> you don't look old. Yeah, you don't look old. Like, and uh, Dream a Little Dream was my favorite Corey Feldman movie, by the way. Really? Oh, so good! That was a great film. Loved it was it. a great. Hey, was it Jason Robards? I think Jason Robards was that yeah. him, the old man. Yeah, yeah, that was a great film. That was a great film. Yeah, uh, R.I.P. Robards. But uh, yeah, I don't for whatever reason I loved that that movie when I was a, a tiny baby growing. I haven't up. seen any of those old movies. Really? Yeah, because my. Uh, dad was a dictator, so I like the Goonies. Never seen it. Fucking oh. none of that. You show. didn't see the Goonies? Oh, you gotta watch the Goonies. I feel. Oh, do you think favorite. that it translates to now? I yes. feel like those movies aren't gonna hold up. I watched it a month ago. The Goonies still translates, still holds up. It is yeah, great. You, no you, reason to remake it. You made that connection when you were a child, though. Like with me having never seen it, am I going to enjoy enjoy it for the first time as an adult? Yes, I think I, I think you will. Uh, if you if you take into account like what the '80s were and, and and all of that stuff. Now, there's movies that I've watched that definitely didn't hold up for me, mm. um, where I was just like, oh boy. That I was... feel like the Back to the Future movies hold up. Yeah, those are yeah. still pretty good movies, yeah, right? Thank you. Thank yes, you. Back to the Future. Yeah, still holds up. Uh, anything with Eddie Murphy still holds up from from oh, yeah. the eighties. I mean, can you imagine Chevy if Eddie Chase. Murphy was a young comedian now? He would have gotten run out of town already. Yeah, he would make it. Oh, he'd be done. He'd be done. He'd be canceled. Most oh most of would be. Yeah. Most you know, I just watched a Norman Lear documentary oh. and I mean he was like, you know, it was all in the family, mm-hmm. which was like, super racist. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but you had the Jeffersons, you had uh what was the first black family on television? Uh, the Jeff- good times. Oh, good times, yeah. Good times, yeah, good yeah. times. Yeah. So he was talking about good times and it was you know, they were a poor black family and there was a leader of the Black Panthers that came into the studio one day with his group of people and mm. walked right to Norman Lear and it's like, you know, you're not portraying, you know, black people in America correctly. This is wrong, wrong, wrong. And Norman Lear said that actually led to the Jeffersons. And the really? Jeffersons well to do black family yes right well that's kind of how interesting very interesting yeah. uh documentary i saw it last night what's the name of it um oh it's uh just look for the norman lear documentary it's on netflix right yeah it's yeah. like you are like me something like it's called something like that. just like, another version of you yeah just another version. Of you. yeah that sounds really interesting because that's how you're supposed to be as a human being when somebody from a group that's marginalized says hey you're marginalizing us and you then you fix it you don't get canceled yeah. you, you fix it Yep. He like that's how we grow, right? The show. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, shit. Yeah. And um, he, he's one of those people where uh, he was so famous and, and had so much power in town. Yeah. He didn't have to do that show. No, of course not. Um, he did it he on his own. Show. 
shows. His he had at one at one time the top ten shows, mm-hmm. six of them were his. Yeah, he's a genius. Uh, he's he's an all timer in the television world. Super and, lefty guy too. Yeah, always. Oh really? I didn't know that. Yes, <laughs> he was. <laughs> A lot of Democrats in, in yeah. and I think for social issues too. Yeah. You know, I understand that. You know, like, look, there's some social issues that I skew very left on, mm-hmm. um, and I get it. But I don't think the Democratic Party is what it used to be. I just don't. I think no, it's no. gone. <clears throat> there, to me, there's. I mean, people who have told me they're socialists. I was at a. I was at a. Um, oh God, it was a like a recall Newsom event or something. Mm-hmm. I was covering. It. I don't think. It, no, it was reopen, reopen California mm-hmm. that I was covering. And I was interviewing a woman, and she said, I'm a socialist. Really? And she's very open about it. And she talked about it, and she's very, you know, is, she's like, no, I'm not a Democrat. I am a socialist. Right. And so there, it's really skewed toward that way. And, and a lot of people are coming out with communist values that I go, that's not democratic. That's communism. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's interesting. I always, uh, I don't like to make assumptions about people, but here's one assumption you can absolutely make. If you're a socialist, you're definitely not a history major. That's a pretty easy one. The other well, thing is trying to cancel history. You know, like Illinois, yeah. yep. they they, they want to they want to take out history classes. You saw <laughs> yeah. that, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. I, my thing is, whenever somebody says they're a socialist, you just give them a one way flight to Venezuela and tell yeah. me how that uh, that yep. society is doing right now. Yep. Uh, but that's just me. Uh, Carrie, uh, look, we could talk for hours. Please come back. If you're down in Austin for November 3rd, we're doing a live election show. Uh, we'd love to have you. And uh, you'll, you'll be around some fine Americans that night. Um, Maybe I will. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, for Carrie Kasem, D'Anthony D'Anthony Holloway, I'm Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone.